Hello everyone! How are you today? This is Sara Cruz of Go Walks Portugal and here I am for another tips and tricks about Portugal. This week I am all into music, so I am going to speak to you about a unique, intangible world heritage of Portugal. It was classified by UNESCO in 2011 and it is Fado. First of all, I would like to tell you what Fado means. Fado means fate, destiny. So when you're singing Fado, you're usually singing about your life or your fate, your destiny. That can be happy or it can be quite tragical. Fado groups are usually formed by one solo singer and a Spanish guitar player or classical guitar player and a Portuguese guitar player. The Portuguese guitar is the instrument associated with Fado, which is, as I said, a unique kind of Portuguese song, and this instrument has 12 strings. If you have seen my uh, last week's video, you have probably heard about the Portuguese guitar already. I did a sneak peek to the Portuguese guitar with a guitarist I know and that I love, which is Hugo Gamboyes, and I'll be developing this theme next Friday, so pay attention to that. Fado started being sang in different kinds of neighborhoods of Lisbon, such as Bairro Alto, Muraria, and also Alfama in the 1830s and 40s. It was influenced by a danced and sang kind of traditional music from Africa and Brazil, and it was adapted from those traditions to the Portuguese culture in general. Usually, this song was used by syndicalists and the operary movement from the uh, Industrial Revolution of the early 19th century in Portugal as a political and social weapon. Other than that, it was usually sang by prostitutes around that area of Lisbon. And actually, one of the first well-known singers that passionate many people was a prostitute called Maria Svera. Maria Svera had an affair with a very important man of the Portuguese aristocracy and soon the aristocracy also fell in love with the charm of Fado. Fado was started being used in theaters as well as musical theater and representations in general and people soon started falling in love with this kind of Portuguese music. All right, so this kind of music, as I was saying, seduced everyone from the lowest social class through the middle and to the highest social class of Portugal. And in 1926, we started a military dictatorship in Portugal. By the time when everyone was already passionate about this kind of music, it actually started being censored by the government. It was forbidden to write certain lyrics, to say certain things, especially when it came to political thoughts and social thoughts as well. But that was something very hard to control due to the fact that radios were a new event and almost anyone could broadcast on radio at the time, and also the musical industry and uh, the discs in general started being sold to almost every kind of person from every kind of social class. So it was really hard for the dictatorship to control this movement. Still, there were lots of lyrics during the dictatorship time and until 1974 that were forbidden and there were many things that people couldn't sing and play. Anyway, people adapted to those times and at the same time in the 30s and 40s and 50s of the 20th century we started seeing lots of fado houses being opened in Lisbon and around Portugal. Because lots of things were forbidden during that time, we started seeing people playing and singing fado as a profession. 
at the same time the government would demand lots of uh, licenses for people to play they also created a professional card for players and singers of fado also every time there was a concert or a show the players and organizers needed to inform the government which needed to see the lyrics for each song and approve them or not so all of these made Fado become less spontaneous and a little bit more professionalized. Nowadays, Fado is sang and played by both professional and amateur singers and players. The most well-known names connected with Fado are Amalia Rodrigues, known as the Queen of Fado. Her voice was spectacular and she attracted the best poets that allowed Fado to skyrocket all the way, not only around national, but also to international venues. Argentina Santos is another very well-known Fado singer, along with Carlos do Carmo. More recently, we had Fado singers that were brought to the spotlight, such as Marisa, Carminho, Ana Moura, or even Kamene. In 1998, there was a new museum opened in Lisbon, all connected with Fado. So if you are around Lisbon, go and check their Museum of Fado. When it comes to listening and witnessing Fado live while you are in Portugal, I totally agree that you should go and check one of Lisbon's Fado houses, but pay attention because some of them are a little bit more touristic and recent than others. And I totally advise that you schedule your table in advance because some of these houses are so well known that they are always full. So you can check them out online and send an email or call them asking to reserve a seat for a specific date and they will do that for you and you'll have the pleasure of witnessing these very special Portuguese kind of music. Some of the most well-known houses are a Svera, that you can find in Bairro Alto. It is managed by the same family for three generations now. Uh, next to it, about just one minute away from a Svera, you have a Dega Machado. And this one is one of the oldest Fado houses of Lisbon. It's from 1937. Other than that, you have Ufaya, founded by Carlos do Carmo's family. Carlos do Carmo was one of the most well-known singers of Fado in Portugal. And you can go to his family's Fado house and listen to Fado over there as an homage to him as well nowadays. Other than that, you can also find a Parreirinha de Alfama. And a Parreirinha de Alfama is really, really well known. So you should definitely go there and check it out. It's a wonderful place in Alfama. Alfama, one of the most typical neighborhoods connected with Fado in Portugal. Then there's also the Café Luzu. Now Café Luzu is in Bairro Alto, but before it was in Avenida da Liberdade. And this place is really, really important because it's actually the place where the Queen of Fado, Amalia Rodrigues, started her career as a Fado singer. So if you have the opportunity, go and check that place out because you won't regret it. It's associated with one of the most important legends of Fado. When it comes to listening to Fado in other places around Portugal, you can definitely find it, but it's more typical to obviously witness it in Lisbon. Anyway, if you are in Porto, they also have some restaurants that organize Fado concerts, so you can uh, check it out and listen to it. And if you obviously come to to my hometown Coimbra, you will have the opportunity to listen to Fado as well, but usually we are more connected with a different kind 
a fado approach i have mentioned it in previous videos i am leaving the links up there so you can check them out after this video if you haven't uh, uh, seen them already and if you are new to this channel uh, and in general fado in coimbra is sang by men and they are students and former students of the University of Coimbra. This kind of fado approach is known as Canção de Coimbra, Coimbra song, and the way the singers um, sing and the way they project their voice and even the themes of the songs are usually a little bit different than Fado of Lisbon. This kind of Fado, the one that is sang in Coimbra, wasn't included in the UNESCO classification of 2011. It was actually included in the classification of Coimbra as a World Heritage City along with the university and uh, with university traditions as a university tradition. So there are two separate things, two different things, and obviously if you are in Coimbra, you can also listen to Fado of Lisbon. There are some restaurants that do that. I'm going to leave some of those contacts in the description box down below. So open the description box and check the links out because I'm leaving some extra information over there about the Fado venues in Lisbon, in Porto, and in Coimbra as well. And now to finish. At the beginning of the video I have mentioned the amazing instrument, the Portuguese guitar, which is the traditional instrument used for fado. This is one of the reasons why fado in Coimbra also has this name instead of just being called Canção de Coimbra, Coimbra song. And the Portuguese guitar is wonderful. Some of the most impressive musicians of Portugal are Portuguese guitarists. So I will mention some of the most impressive Portuguese guitarists ever. They are José Fontes Rocha. He played with Amália Rodrigues, so no introductions are needed. He's such a legend in Fado in Portugal. Then António Cheinho, and obviously I need to mention this one, Carlos Paredes. Carlos Paredes is one of the biggest legends of the Portuguese guitar playing. He started playing with his father when he was nine years old. His father was also a Portuguese guitar legend, Artur Paredes. He wanted to play faster and technically better than any other Portuguese guitar player so far. So he is just mind-blowing. You should check his work out. Carlos Paredes was born in in my hometown Coimbra in 1925. <laughs> Obviously you're going to listen about Carlos Paredes in my next video. You're going to see uh, and hear two pieces of Carlos Paredes played by Hugo Gamboias, that friend of mine who is going to tell you about the Portuguese guitar in a couple of days for my next video. So stay tuned if you haven't subscribed to the channel do that if you have thank you so much for being part of my youtube family i love that you comment my videos as well so don't forget leaving a comment down below and i will see you in a couple of days bye